Well, everybody, welcome to Geek Impulse. I'm your host, Joshua Sexton, here with an amazingly talented individual who I've had the pleasure of knowing since 2006, I believe, uh, Mr. Paul Parker, who has an acting um, school and, and has been in the industry for quite some time. But I, I don't want to take away from him, so I'll let him go ahead and explain who he is, uh, where he's been doing, and you know all that good stuff. Uh, okay. Hello, um, Josh, and hello, everybody. Of course, uh, Josh is a former student of mine. Um, uh, sorry if I look a little tear in the eyes. I've just got a little bit of hay fever. Uh, this uh, recording has taken place with me in uh, the state of Victoria in Australia, most importantly, in spring. So um, it's quite warm today, and it has been for the last couple of days, and it's morning here. And in the morning, uh, I sneeze a bit and hence the teary eyes. But uh, here I am, um, I'm an acting coach and a uh, performance in business presentation coach. So I'm a qualified teacher. I'm in my 32nd year of teaching. Um, uh, I started uh, working in the entertainment industry professionally in 1979 on a television show called The Sullivans as an actor. I worked as an actor for approximately 25 years, won two awards, one in Australia, one in America. Um, and the last gig I did as an actor was actually on Young and the Restless <laughs> in Los <laughs> Angeles. I got offered a, uh, a, a part on a recurring role on the district, I think it was at the time. And at that time, I decided to give up acting because... I'd already begun my own teaching school. So um, I have a Bachelor of Education. I graduated uh, in drama, literature, and language linguistics in 1991. And I moved to America in 2000. But prior to then, from around 1990, I started teaching. I just kept it all very quiet because in Australia, that's what you do. You just say you're one thing and that's all. But I actually was teaching as well as acting for a period of time. Moved to America with a feature film that I did in Sydney, hoping to get theatrical release in, across Australia or America. And um, Neither of those things happened, but I ended up staying in America for nearly 11 years. Um, and I started a school in June of 2002. It was first called Acting to Achieve School, ATAS. And people said it had Scientology <laughs> connotations, so no disrespect to anybody at the Church of Scientology, but we decided to change the name. And a student, Ben Mayer, from San Francisco, came up with Australian Institute of Dramatic Arts and, of course, the acronym IDA. The school ran for nearly 10 years in Los Angeles, for six and a half years in New York, for about five to six months in Chicago, and I also did some guest classes in San Francisco. Um, during that time, we did three showcases, and the final one uh, we did was in 2009, and that uh, a showcase went on in Hollywood, in LA, in San Francisco, and in Off-Broadway in Manhattan, New York. Um, I moved back to Australia in 2011 and immediately started teaching on Skype. And uh, I can remember when I closed the school in America, people said to me um, that, why would you uh, want to close the school? And I'd said, well, you know, I had a brother die of cancer and I had bowel cancer myself and I was a bit burnt out. So, um, and I've been gone for a long time. So I closed the school and came home and the students were like, nobody's going to do classes on Skype. Well, 10 years later, and of course with COVID, um, now, all of my classes are on Skype. Um, so, I've been teaching on and off in Australia since 1990. I've been teaching in Japan uh, since 2013. So, from 13 to 19 every year in Tokyo and Osaka. A couple of those years in two or three schools, um, uh, different schools, different acting schools. Um, I, my Tokyo Osaka teaching tour was cancelled in 
2020 because of COVID and not this year, but I plan to go back in 22. And one of the schools just this morning has just offered me a full-time position in Tokyo, which I don't know if I'm going to accept, but that's how it reads based on the message that's just come through this morning. Um, I've been teaching in America since 2002. And I branched into South Korea in 2021. So that's, uh, oh, and I taught in China at two universities in 2010. So that's Australia, Japan, China, South Korea, and of course, America. Um, Janetta Annette is probably my biggest celebrity American actor. She's almost got 100 IMDb credits and I've privately coached her for uh, Washington Field, NCIS, a whole bunch of auditions and things that she booked. Um, and so if people Google Janetta, they basically know who she is. Um, Gerald Webb, I trained for two and a half years. He's got, uh, I think, about 100 IMDb credits and um, is an award winner. Nama Kate, I trained first as a 17-year-old in the New York branch of Ida and then in Los Angeles. And... She's won seven awards, some as an actor and some as a producer. And IMDb has her listed as a seven award winning um, actor. She's also a singer and a producer. Um, Alina Madison's just under 100 uh, IMDb credits. I only trained her for a year. Um, Preston Jones around the 40, 50s. I trained for a couple of years. Tanu Masakoi, I think he's up to 55 in the last Terminator and most TV shows. Um, I trained for about two and a half years. So I can't claim the fame that I'm the only person that trained them, but those five people are probably the most successful. Nicole Dion is somebody else I think is worth mentioning. She's in the 40s with IMDb credits, um, but also is a successful casting director with over 20 credits as a casting director with her partner in Los Angeles. And Sia McLaren, which I know uh, Josh knows is worth mentioning because she uh, is a seven times award winner on stage. So it doesn't have the big film and TV credits, but has won many awards on stage. Um, actors I've trained in Australia have been series regular on many shows, leads in feature films and short films and web series and commercials, of course, and all those sort of things. We just missed out on a massive deal with one of Australia's biggest uh, directors, uh, Jocelyn Morehouse. Two of two actors I've trained in the last couple of years have worked with Jocelyn on other projects, TV miniseries, and we just missed out on a rec another recurring uh, just last week. Um, so I actively teach today in South Korea, Japan, on both coasts of America and across Australia. I have clients in Perth, on one side of Australia and Melbourne on the other side, Melbourne and Sydney, and even in the middle in Adelaide I have as well. And sometimes up in Brisbane, I also have clients. Uh, that's me, Ida Acting, A-I-D-A-A-C-T-I-N-G.com is the website. And I also have a performance in business presentation company, and that's called Paul Parker Performance Coaching. And that is... Uh, paulparkerpc.com.au. So I've trained, uh, it's worth you knowing this, uh, Josh, I've trained um, doctors, CEOs, uh, many presenters, teachers, all sorts of people that want to work on their presentation. And uh, some of them it is for television. So I had taught a doctor for a couple of years who's been on many of the mainstream TV shows like Ongoing for a few years um, and I teach them how to perform for the camera, how to multicam, et cetera, et cetera, as well as teaching them breath and voice. Um, so they give good flavor with the tone of their voice, which is very important for film and TV. And Josh was a student of mine in 2006 for a period of time, I think for a couple of years. Um, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you for the background and what you've done and, and the accolades. I mean, that's just who you've taught that have been successful, but you yourself have been successful and you, you touched on that. For me, yeah, so I did some, some acting, but didn't 
mostly on stage, didn't get into any like films and things like that, mostly because I kind of got jaded with um, Hollywood. But when taking your class, I was fresh out of the, the military and I was kind of a robot and you were like, you know, hey, you can't be so stiff and stuff like that. The one of my first experiences, aside from that, that really stuck out to me is when you were teaching us about uh, I don't know if I can talk about one of your methods. Is, is that OK? Um, uh, depends. I may say stop. I have a book coming out soon, Josh. My first book and my actually my second it. book's more than half. Finished, well, let's put it this way. It depends what you say. I'll, I'll try not to. Yeah, I'll try not to take away from it. So, you know, you 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 put the we were watching a few good men and you put the everything on mute, right? So there's no sound, and you were teaching us a certain method on how the two actors are interacting with one another. Uh, you mentioned what it's called and everything else. Um, again, so I'm not good. I'm right. trying to without yeah. spoiling it, right? Yeah. And it stuck out to me because you can actually see what you're talking about, you know, and how, you know, actors are able to convey through their expressions alone and their eye movement, these types of things, uh, what they want to really convey to the audience that's watching, and how it is that we gravitate towards certain characters where we kind of don't care about others. And so that stuck out to me. And since then, even when I'm watching TV, I've noticed it's still the case, right? But the reason why I, I brought that up as well is something that stuck out to me is because even in business, right, um, you can see it uh, when two people are talking with one another, right? Or when I'm interacting with someone myself, you know, I can look at some, some things and see if they're really listening to me or not. And it's helped me um, be more successful in business. So I guess my first real question for you, besides for the first one I asked is, you know, what was it? What was the catalyst? What made you say, you know what, I want to teach? How did you, what was the inspiration for a lot of the methods you came up with, and without giving them away, of course, and, um, you know, so therefore we kind of get an idea of like, what was it that really said, you know what, I love acting. I still want to do it, but this is my passion. Well, it's a, it's a big question. Firstly, thank you for um, uh, acknowledging that I analyze film and TV acting on screen, which I do and consistently still today do. Um, and many students get sent a lot more than a few actors performing in A Few Good Men. Um, to analyze and see what's going on and what they're doing to learn how to perform in the frame and for the screen. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of a, a bizarre way. It's, it's the, the desire to be an actor was so unbelievably strong that in year 12, the final year of high school, I was called drama head because I was so obsessed with with acting and the whole thing. And then I went to university and did a Bachelor of Education, but really I ended up at that university doing a Bachelor of Education because I didn't get into one of the best of the, at the, that time, best acting schools. I got shortlisted for one. I got put on standby for another, but didn't get into the three major, what at that time was deemed the best acting schools. And so everybody in the industry would say, if you don't get into one of those three, then you go to Victoria College Rusden, which became Deakin University. And then uh, it wasn't long before I realized that hundreds of very, very successful people had actually gone there. Um, and for example, Rachel Griffiths was in my year when I first started. And of course she's been nominated for an Oscar and for Hillary and Jackie and in um, Six Feet Under, she was just fantastic in Six Feet Under and has a long now successful career. And Rachel's a drama dance major, but there's many, many others that I could mention um, that went to the same place. So I ended up there and became a teacher and I came out and I'm working, trying to work as an actor and you've got to survive. So I would teach, but not really tell anybody that I was teaching. And I, um, the, I kept getting offered jobs for teaching. Like when I graduated in 91, like everywhere I did a teaching round, 
in my final two years of 1990 or 1991, while I was still attached to the university, the schools were offering me positions saying, please come and get teach. You know, we'll offer you a full-time job or whatnot. And I kept saying, no, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. Keep working as an actor, even though I'd worked on and off since 1979. When I moved to America, I just got totally absorbed initially as an actor and absorbed into how much Los Angeles loves the performing arts and loves artists and loves actors. It's the actor-friendly city in the English-speaking world. There's no doubt about it. Or it was when I was there from 2000 to 2011, living there full time. Um, so uh, basically, I ran out of money, Josh. So here's me putting all my energy into workshops and headshots and sending out my resume and all of these sort of things. And the exchange rate was so poor um, for the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. I think it got down to 43 US cents for the Australian dollar. So basically everything that I was getting was double. So if I would go and get a beer in Hollywood and they'd say five bucks and you give a tip, so it's $6. Well, I'm immediately going, it's costing me $12 for this beer, $12, $13 of my money. So if I didn't earn American money, I knew that my money would eventually go. So um, economics came in. I had a girlfriend at the time and she said why don't you you're a teacher why don't you start teaching and I'm like why why would I why would I teach and she's like people might be interested in Australian techniques you know nobody here is teaching it and I thought why would they be interested she goes you might be surprised so um in about April or May um at the complex theaters on Santa Monica, Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood in the room right down the end of the hall upstairs little small room, I did a free class and probably about 15 to 20 actors came and I think about seven or eight signed up. And next thing you know, I've got a school. I've got to call it a name. They're like, you're amazing. This We've got to keep going. We're not, we're not going to stop. And it went from that to you know, being in three cities and me going to San Francisco as well. So in LA, Manhattan, and Chicago, you know, staffed with Australian teachers, administrators, um, and the actors just kept booking work. So I got such a buzz out of writing the curriculum and the actors would implement it and book work. And so my at, at, at one point, a year into the school, uh, just over a year, I decided I, I had to stop. I had three agents, a commercial agent, voiceover agent, theatrical agent. I had a manager. So I had four people representing me as an actor. I joined AFTRA because I'd been on TV. I wrote to Melissa, I think Melissa Gilbert, I think was her name, was the president of the time of SAG and drew her attention uh, via the Australian Union to my body of work, um, which wasn't, you know, major. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I was an Australian celebrity actor. I wasn't, but I'd worked a lot. And she wrote back, or her assistant wrote back, saying I could join SAG. So then the next thing you know, I'm in SAG as well as AFTRA. I got everything going, but my students are booking more than anything. And then I auditioned for the district and got a call back for the district, and my theatrical agent said, these are the dates you've got to shoot. You're going to be, it was over a three month period. And I said, uh, Vaughan Hart was my theatrical agent, Vaughan Hart and Associates in uh, West Hollywood on uh, Sunset Boulevard, I think he was. And I, I said, um, Vaughan, I'm going home. And he's like, what are you doing? I said, well, my football team's in the finals. <laughs> I'm a crazy football fan. I haven't been home for a year. I'm going home to watch my AFL football team. And he said, you can't go. I mean, the shooting period is from here to here. And I said, I'm going. And the plane took up. I lifted up. We lifted the plane, lifted up above the smog, Josh. And I looked out the window and I thought, I don't need to act anymore. I'm not going to act anymore. And that was wow. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's 
That's intense. And it's interesting, you know, that story, that's something I didn't know about you. And, but you, you obviously are someone who is like, you know what, um, how do I make, you know, orange juice out of these oranges, right? Mm. Uh, or lemons out of, you know, lemon juice out of lemons. You know, your, your, the exchange rate sucks. I get that, you know, when I travel internationally, you know, uh, usually it's, it's good because, for example, when I go to the Philippines, it's 50 uh, pesos per dollar, mm. right? And you can eat off of things for like 20 pesos, right? right, right. So that's a really good exchange rate. So I can imagine the reverse of that would really be something that would uh, be kind of scary, especially when you're in a new land where you kind of uh, don't know too many people per se, and yeah. you're really doing that. And that shows, I guess, you know, definitely the, the character of you and the drive you have and the passion for wanting to do what you do now. I, my, my next question is, you know, what have you seen as far as how the industry has evolved over the years, as well as um, the phenomenon of the international uh the international stuff, right? So for example, Squid Game over from Korea, you know, you got Japanese anime getting really big, even bigger in the West. So you see a lot of these international markets coming in. You have Money Heist, which I believe is from Spain, right? So you got a lot of these really good international films and shows and things like that that are really breaking uh, massive ground in the US. So what do you feel is the reason for that? How has um, Hollywood evolved over time since you've really started teaching and things like that. I talk about in my book that America is open to everyone, anyone and anything. I mean, the, the, country, the country that took the most Afghan refugees um, when the Taliban took back over just recently was America, according to our news programs. America has, Los Angeles has Koreatown, Little Tokyo, Little Armenia. You know, I lived in Little Armenia in Hollywood um, for nearly all of the time. I lived in the Hollywood Hills a little bit, but lived in Little Armenia for most of the time, my living time in Hollywood. And um, I, I think that what, what America's really good at is opening itself up to anybody and anything to learn and then they adapt it as best they can. I mean, you look at the office, you've got the British version, then the American version. You know, England's got James, uh, James Bond, America's got Jason Bourne, JB. I don't know if you've made that connection, but basically Matt Damon is, is the James Bond of America in the Bourne movies, I believe. Um, and, and, and so um, they don't always copy stuff, but they take stuff from anywhere and they give it a go or they're like, we'll, we'll consider this. Now, of course, America's also got a massive, massive cable television network where they can screen, you know, stuff from all around the world. And in reference to people getting into animation and things like that, well, the Japanese, are, as we all know, are top of the list in regards to um, animation and have a very long history in that area. Um, and so it, it doesn't surprise me that America wants to pay attention to that and give credence to that and consider that. And when I look at um, a lot of the movies, the animated movies from Disney and all sorts of other companies coming out of America, you oft, if you read the, when you're in the industry, you read the credits. <laughs> when you read the credits, you see so many Asian names. Obviously, I'm generalizing. But you see plenty of Asian names that are associated and involved in making even American productions in America. So that's the beauty of it. You know, they used to give out a green card. I'm not sure if they still do. America used to give out 50,000 green cards a year. And they called it the green card lottery. And anybody from, mo from most countries in the world can apply for it. So I applied for it more than once, I think, and you give the US government money, and I'm sure they made a lot of money out of it, but they gave 50,000 a year. And this is a really good way to build population and things like that. So um, so that's that's the answer in regards to animation and things like that. And, and internationally, I think America has a long history 
of um, of being open, opening their borders to people from all around the world. And I think that's fantastic. I never knew there was a Korea town or that there was a massive Iranian population in West Hollywood. Like I never knew this until I got there and little Tokyo and et cetera, et cetera. What about Thai town? I used to eat in Thai town every week living in Hollywood. You know, I love Asian food. So um, I think it's, it's just great that America does that. In reference to the industry, generally speaking, when you've been involved in the industry for as long as I have, um, you, we try, as we get older, to keep the cynicism away because we, you know, there are so, such a, a potpourri of people in the entertainment industry. <coughs> people are in it for money. People are in it for love. People are in it for passion. People are in it to make money off other talented people. Uh, people are in it for many reasons, but I try to be positive and think that people are in it because they're good at what they do and they can make magnificent work. That's what I like to think. Thank you. I, I really have a lot more questions, but I know we're getting close on the time you got to get going, right? I've got a, but, class, uh, in, I've got a class in 15 minutes, so... Um, I'm, I'm okay. okay. So yeah. I'll ask, I'll ask two more questions then, or maybe three, if you can get it down to less than 15 minutes. So first one, talk about your book, what it's going to be about, what's the name and when it's coming out, where people can get it. It's called acting the Australian way. It's uh, currently with a professional editor. And uh, when it gets, uh, when it comes out, it'll be available to buy online You'll be able to buy it in America, in England, of course, and in Australia. And it'll be translated into Japanese because I've got a long history of teaching in Japan dating back to 2013. So it'll be um, in Japanese as well. Um, basically what it is, is it talks about what is Australian techniques that I've been teaching since 2002. So I derived a technique based on coaches that I had when I was younger, things that I learned and... Um, influences from books that I'd read. And so I created a technique called Australian Techniques, which you know of. Talks about that. It talks about developing you and the inner you. So you are in the best position to have your mind clear and to focus on the work and not have um, insecurities or fears in there. Talks about that. Talks about, of course, breath and voice, where to breathe in the body, how to use breath to support voice and how to use your breath and voice to help you um, book work and achieve the things that I want you to do, which link in with the techniques, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it gives um, case studies, Josh. So it, it's got a section that talks about educating you on things not to do as well as things to do. A lot of actors make a lot of mistakes um, and uh, think uh, the wrong way a lot of times. And so it's, it's got some case studies and, and et cetera. Well, I've actually got interviews from classes and all sorts of things, which, um, which will help the reader. That's awesome. Like I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully I can get a signed copy. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, um, yeah that would be awesome. Uh, my next question is for anybody who's starting out, right? Wanting to get into acting, maybe they're in high school or something like that, or wanting to get in voice acting, whatever however you want to approach it, what is the best advice you can give them to get off the ground and on the right foot getting yeah, into acting? Sure. The best advice is um, that, and I've got to be careful how I say this, um, just because you're really successful doesn't mean you're good. Just because you've got a name in a school doesn't mean you're really good. So you want to choose your teacher wisely. I'm absolutely a technique teacher. I teach in three areas, and those areas are psychology, what's going on in the mind, physiology, how the body works, and physiognomy, what we do with our head and, the face, head and face and eyes, especially for on screen, on camera. I teach a curriculum in three different sections. One section is called um, basically the curriculum, so all the subjects, and then make choices, the scene study, backstory, etc., And then the let go, play, relax, enjoy, three different areas. When you get the script, 
or the thing that you're working on, I encourage you to do as much preparation as you can. And I teach it in a way where you're always exploring. And then when you get to the final end, so that's the subject, then you make your choices and then you let go, play, relax, enjoy. When you get to that section, I still, that area, I still teach you, which is the audition area, of course, to explore because life is an exploration. Life is an improvisation. And the way that somebody talks to you and how they talk to you and how they use their body and move their body towards you or look at you, et cetera, all should be taken in by the opposite person, meaning you doing the audition, how you're spoken to, et cetera, et cetera. So my advice would be choose your teacher wisely and do as much preparation as you can. Learn technique, one that works with you. I teach five different techniques, Australian techniques is one. Um, I teach four others. Um, learn the technique, and they're all four classical techniques, by the way, just very quickly. Stanislavski from Russia, Grotowski from Poland, Laban from Hungary, and um, an, an approach to acting by Brecht based on his theatre of estrangement, alienation. And within that, by the way, there's Lecoq, mutual mask and all sorts of things, but uh, Lecoq work. But choose your teacher wisely. Do as much preparation as you can based on how long you've got prior to the audition for the work. Um, and then remember to let go and relax and enjoy and explore in the performance. Kate Blanchett openly says she won't accept a role unless there's a journey that she can explore. Um, she said that many years ago in an interview. And it's and I, I'm the same. I think exactly the same. Awesome. I, I really appreciate that. And I know you got to get going. So real quick, right. what is, so yeah, so we will have to come back and interview some more. So what is a question that you, cause you've done interviews before aside from me. So what is a question you've always wanted to be asked, but no one has asked you. And then after you answer that, tell everybody where they can find you. Tell, tell everybody what, where they can what? Find me. Yeah. So uh. Yeah, yeah. So after you answer that question, right, what's the one question you've always wished you were asked, but you're never asked? And then where people can find you on social media or whatever so they can interact? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question. That's a, that's a terrific question. I'd have to think about that. What happened to be? It's funny, you know, I've done, <clears throat> this is my third US interview. I've had an Australian interview in the last month, but I've also had three other American interviews in the last couple of months a podcast and a magazine and stuff. Um, so, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I hope one get one, all I can say is Josh, I hope, I hope the people watching this get a sense um, of that I'm real. Like I can be really tough and really direct when I coach, but I love what I do and I'm, extremely learned and I know my heart is in the right place and I've taught many thousands of actors over those five countries and I love what I do even at this point here um, and I know that when COVID's all over I'll be back in America teaching and back in Japan um, sooner rather than later based on that message this morning um, and, and yeah, so the, the question, I don't know. I don't know, what, except that I'm, yeah, just to answer by saying I'm passionate because I can't think of an answer. Um, IdaActing.com is the acting website and Paul at Ida Acting. Uh, Paul at Ida Acting. Yeah, Paul at IdaActing.com is the email address. I'm on Facebook under Paul Parker as well as Ida. So I've got a, a separate AID one at AIDA. Um, and at, in the Facebook, you can see me with uh, Oscar statues. So I've been to a few Oscars and Golden Globes. So you can see uh, Oscar statues behind me on my Facebook because there's plenty of Paul Parkers. On Instagram, it's at Ida Acting, um, which hasn't been going that long. So it'd be great if you could follow me on Instagram. Um, and I'm in LinkedIn under my name as well. So I'm basically in, in all of those um, 
and at Ida Acting on Facebook as well, but not on, I'm not in Twitter. I know you're in Twitter. I'm not in Twitter. <laughs> that's, enough, that's enough social media for me, mate. You're younger than yeah. I am. So you can, yeah, I'm not on TikTok either. Right? You don't see me dancing <laughs> on TikTok. Got it. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul, for being here. And we'll have to do it again um, because there's still a lot of questions I have for you. But I appreciate no you uh, doing this. No worries. Someone no. I've admired for a very long time, and I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Yep, we've known each other for 15 years, um, Josh. And I want to say that um, you're a terrific man. And I really love the whole concept of Geek Impulse, your company, and what you're doing. And um, I know from talking to you, um, how passionate you are about it. And so um, I want to wish you all the best with your company and everything that you do. And it's a great name and a great, uh, great thing that you're doing. And I wish you all the very best.